It's been two years since the Nigerian government killed over 50 people and injured hundreds of people protesting at the Lekito Gate and still have their country to set up panels of inquiry to investigate the killing at the Lekito Gate. What a joke. While traveling from Lagos to Enugu about a year ago, on the first anniversary of the Lekito Gate massacre, I met a woman who lost her only child and son at the Lekito Gate on the very night of the massacre. And as we conversed, the woman looked at me with a shaky voice. She said, The blood of my child is yearning for justice. And in an instant way to comfort her, I said to her, Don't worry, ma. Justice will be served regardless. But deep down, I thought to myself, Is it naive of me to think that the Ensa's movement was a success? Damn, it could have been me. Sitting next to her, I felt her pain and so. I felt it was so huge to quantify. Throughout the eight hour journey, I was thinking about this woman. I was thinking about her son. I was thinking about the government. I was thinking about the zombie military that did the killing. I was thinking about Barry's son. I was thinking about Son Lowu's son. The Attorney General's children. The Vice President's children. Like, why would they do this to a human being? Why would they kill my friend? No justice for my friends, no justice for this woman child. And why are we forgetting so soon that the people that should be held accountable for this killing are the same people setting up panel and are the same people that are currently running for various government offices. Hello guys and welcome. I remain your one and only host to Kuri Kachiku Edwin Patrick Pew, aka One in Seven Bill, aka Pew World, aka Watermelon Gang. And please, if you've not liked this video, like this video and share, subscribe, like this video and share, subscribe, like this video and share, subscribe. And let's get right into this video. Thank you. Everyone, sit down, sit down, sit down. The answers put there started from agitations on social media. When a video of a police brutalizing a young man surfaced and started trending. More videos started surfacing showing the inhuman treatment and killings of young Nigerians by the special anti-robbery squad known as SARS. Regardless of how it started, it's very important to note and give credit to Faust and Ron Town, the two popular Nigerian artists who started one of the first protests during the early weeks of November 2020. Two weeks later, during the height of the protest, on 20th of October 2020, on a Tuesday, precisely around 6.45 p.m., the military came and turned off the lights at the toll gate and started firing. Hundreds of people were injured severely and more than 50 people were killed. Innocent souls were lost. Then it followed days of intense riots and vandalism of private and public properties. Then people started uncovering different palliative storage facilities, which was meant for the public but was siphoned by public and government officials. Like I said earlier before, it would be very naive of me to say that much was achieved as a result of the NSAS protests, but it would also be very stupid of me to say that we didn't achieve anything as a result of the NSAS protest. Justice can be gotten if you are asking justice from the people that are perpetrators of the injustice which you seek to get rid of or annihilate. Let me make it clear and clear enough. The people that should be held responsible or hold accountable for the killings at the Lekito Gate are as follows. The sitting president of the country as of the time of the killing, the chief of staff, the Chief of Army Staff, the Minister of Defense, the Chief of Defense Staff, Lagos State Governor, the Senators of Lagos East, the Honorables of the Constituency as of that time. But for some reasons, none of the individuals holding these positions have been blamed for their inactions or their actions in the Lekki Massacre. It's really painful. But what's more painful is that we see these things as a thing of past. And that's just bad. 
because if we are in a well-groomed society every individual is holding that position will either resign or never hold the political position again but they are still sitting or they are still stakeholders holding various political offices or political appointments currently I think one thing that people fail to understand about the achievement of the NSAS protest is that it opened our eyes, when I mean it opened our eyes, I mean the social circuit generation to know that things don't have to be like this and despite your one liked video, you still have a voice regardless to speak out and speak up against injustice until you're gone down by an un- unknown soldier. Then another man picks up the mountain from where you stopped and continued. But regardless of what happened, you have the right to speak up against injustice. The answers protest made them scared that they had to burn. The answers protest made us understand that regardless of tribe and ethnicity, we only have one enemy and that's the injustice within us. Because the palliative was shared and it was not given during the lockdown. It was shared from the federal level down to the local government level. But it was not given to the people. It was not given to the southeast. It was not given to the people in the southwest. It was not even given to the people in the south south. It was held by your own brothers. It was held by your own king. It was held by your own governor. They think they've killed the hope which the NSAS protest gave the young Nigerians. They actually think they succeeded. But the spirit of the defenseless and innocent lived through us and it definitely lived through me. And that's why I'm writing this. I'm not a freedom fighter, I'm not a politician, I'm not even an activist or a public figure or a speaker. I'm just a human being that feels the pain of a mother losing her only child. Damn. That could have been my mom. Guys, the military, the military are here right now, they are shooting at us.